may be you, it may be me, it may be someone by my side, it may be me. Father, we are grateful unto you for this day. Eternal God, we worship you because you are the God of all creation. We thank you for what you are doing in the midst of your people. Father, we present ourselves and life unto you. Visit us. Take us from glory to glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I thank you so much. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. This weekend, we are dealing with, with the subject of new heights with the most high. We are talking about growth. We are talking about development. We are talking about a new encounter with the Lord. We are talking about a new dimension. We are talking about the touch of the Lord. We are talking about being who God has ordained for you to be. We are talking about you no longer operating at the surface level, but a higher level. The Lord will take you up to that higher level in Jesus' name. I'm talking about reposition for revival and divine turn around. The Lord will reposition you in Jesus' name. Because when you are revived, Things turn around. Things are done different. In the book of Isaiah chapter 6, I look at it from verses 1 to 7. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. In the year that the king I, Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, upon the throne, high and lifted up. Mark that word, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above it stood the, the, the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. And with twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. I need an amen there. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is gone. You know, we spoke about life virus earlier on but now it's about life hold from the very altar of the Lord the seraphims that were crying the Bible tells us in verse 3 that they were crying one to another holy 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 when you get to whatever level you are right now to another level higher level level of holiness and righteousness, level of purity and uprightness, then all your vision, all your desire, all your aspiration will be holiness. Your son will be holiness. And then it will be holiness unto the Lord, will be our watch, world, and son. Holiness unto the Lord as we are marching on. As you get into this new encounter and relationship with the Lord, all the things of the world that clouds your brow will fade away at the presence of the Lord. 
there is a position that man automatically finds himself by virtue of the nature of Adam. That is the nature of sin. But when you repent of that sin, you confess it unto the Lord, you become a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You are now beginning to operate at a different level. A different level. David said in the book of Psalm 51, in verse 5, he said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. In order for you to get to this new height we are talking about, Praise God for those of you that are born again. But what level of that relationship with God are you? New height with the most high. What level are you in your work? In every family, we have the babes. We have the toddlers. We have children. We have the youth. You have, we have the teenagers, the young adults. And then we have the fathers and the mothers. Uh, and then we have uh, people that are adult but not yet married. What level are you? Now, that is about age. There are people also that their maturity level does not necessarily depend upon their age. Yes, they may have a number of uh, years upon their life, but they are still like children. They act like children. They talk like children. They behave like children. And the Lord is saying, come up high. You have been around this mountain for too long. You have been a member of the church for so long. And you just come in and you go. And there is nothing we can really say that you are to the church other than just being a member. And the Lord is saying, come up high. Or maybe you are even a worker. And today we see you. Tomorrow we do not see you. The Lord is saying, come up high. For you to be able to come up high, you have to get to a point of self-dissatisfaction with your current state. If you are not dissatisfied with your current level, your current state of position, you'll never seek for a better position. If you are not dissatisfied with your current job, you'll not look for another job, if, uh, uh, a better job. And the Lord, they say, there is something better than the level where you are right now. And you are a worker. The Lord wants you to be a better one. That cannot be until there is revival. And the Lord will revive you, revive me, revive all of us together in Jesus' name. In the book of Psalm 85, the Bible tells us there in the sixth verse, it says, Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice? When there is that revival, I call it spiritual awakening, there is joy within. Within yourself, there is joy. And people around you, there will be joy as well. Many people want that revival, but few people actually seize it. Many ask for revival, but few people pray for it. There are a lot of shouting and singing, a lot of music and sermon. A lot of prayer, but few purity. A lot of media, but few meditation. A lot of singing, but few sorrowing for sin. A lot of pop ups or popping up, but few power. The power of the Holy Ghost. Many pride in their churches, but God is not proud of them. The Lord is calling you to look inward. Look at yourself. Ask yourself, where am I in my walk with the Lord? The Lord wants you to come up high, new height with the most high. The Lord will take you there in Jesus' name. There are people that have left their old churches to come to our church, but they have not left their old life. They left Egypt, but Egypt has not left them. The Lord is calling you to a new walk with him, a new relationship with him. Ezekiel chapter 37, I look at it from verse 7. Ezekiel 37, from verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. I prayed that today there will be a shaking in the house in Jesus' name. Whether you are watching online 
or you are here in person, I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will reach out unto you. The power of the Lord will touch you and do something uh, dramatic in your life in Jesus' name. And behold, they shake him, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. I pray that your nakedness will be covered up. I need a better one. And the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O bread, and breathe upon this slave. Stop right there. When your life is not where it ought to be, when you are not growing the way you ought to grow, or when you have a stunted growth, it's because something is wrong in your system. Something is wrong with your life. And the Lord will take away that which is wrong because you have been slain. Whether spiritually slain, matrimonially slain, um, socially slain, financially slain, whatever kind of attack in your life, the Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. O oh, bread, and breathe upon this slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. God will raise you up an army for him. Amen. Isaiah chapter 1, I look at it from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4. Ah, simple nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children that are corrupters. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. Stop right there. When I was ministering yesterday to the leaders, I told them that uh, when there is a correction, the uh, you call it discipline. The purpose of discipline is for a change, a correction, to make things right. And I said that if you get discipline for something and there is no change, and we withdraw that discipline because it's like you are a bastard. It doesn't matter to you. It's like you don't care. It's like the fear of God is not there. Uh, it's like uh, the spirit of God is not controlling you. I tell people that every human being in life is under the control of one out of two spirits. It is either the Holy Spirit of God or an evil spirit. And so when there is rebellion, when there is stubbornness, and the Bible says that rebellion, stubbornness are actually like the sin of witchcraft, so we can just conclude that you are operating under a different spirit, and that, that correction will not help because you do more. Come back to this book of Isaiah. Verse 5. It says, Why should you be stricken anymore? Ye will do what? Revolt more and more. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. It says, The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faints. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in him, but wounds and bruises, and the fut uh, putrefying soul. They have not been closed neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Verse 7, your country is desolate. Your cities are born with fire. Your land, strangers devoid in your presence. Your land, your family, your soul, your spiritual life, your relationship with the Lord. That is your life, that is your land, that is your possession. Strangers, the enemy, devoid in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughters of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of Okumba, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts has left us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. The Lord is calling, you, calling us to spiritual awakening. To awake and get repositioned to God's level of expectation. There be need for revival. 
the question is, what is revival? Revival is hope springing up in the place of hopelessness. Revival is spiritual life of blossoming after periods of spiritual boldness and death. Revival is the zeal, the passion, and the consecration replacing inactivity or lack of interest in spiritual matters, especially among the people of God. Revival is when the Lord makes us to be heavenly minded rather than being absorbed by or in the things of this world. It is a new repentance from our sin, self, and arrogance. Some people, they don't understand their level, that they are cool, that they are lukewarm, that God is about to spew them out. And they think religion is the order of the day. No. Revival ushers in an era of genuine conversion. And that is why in our churches, when we sing, let us sing songs that will connect us with heaven. When we minister, let us minister messages that will prepare people for heaven. If we just want crowd in the church, the crowd will come. But where are we taking them to? If we gather the kind of a crowd that is all about sentiment, it's all about activity, it's all about a pump here, and at the end of the day, everybody ends up in hellfire, then we have labored in vain. I pray we will not labor in vain in Jesus' name. So when there is revival, it ushers in genuine conversion. It ushers in real commitment and consecration unto the Lord. And among clear evidences of revival and renewal, a passion for God and hunger, as well as thirst for holiness, for humility, and for heaven. The religious spirits are determined to build the church in America. Spirit of religion. Spirit of religion. And they comport themselves in yeah, the same Christian song. They preach and they teach. But the question is, where is the lie? They have the form of godliness, but deny the power bearing. They want to build the church on the foundation of prosperity. They want to build the church on the foundation of paraphernalia, of public showmanship. They want to build the church upon the foundation of prophecy, miracle signs, and wonders. Why we believe in miracles, we believe in signs and wonders. But the church of Christ must be built upon the word of God, must be built upon holiness and righteousness, upon purity and uprightness. The religious spirits of this age, which are taking over this land, this nation, has inspired the entire range of churches on how to pioneer lukewarm churches based on programs rather than the apostolic power of the Holy Ghost. I pray the Lord will visit us in Jesus' name. The Lord is telling this church, this church, deeper life Bible church in the nation of America to come up higher. The Lord is telling you as an individual to come up higher. The Lord is telling you to get out of your lukewarm stage and be side by side with the Lord. You know, Isaiah that we read about in chapter 6 had been in the Lord, so to say, not just in the Lord, a minister, so to say. He has been doing things, but at a certain level. But it got a point when the eyes of Isaiah was opened, and he had that vision, and he saw that revelation, and he saw the Lord in his holy tabernacle. The perception of Isaiah changed. And the, the, the vision of Isaiah changed. The desire and the passion changed. Everything changed. And then Isaiah began to desire God and God alone. May God be your number one desire in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, one of the, uh, my mentors in this area, uh, of course, our father in the Lord, number one. But then there are other people I read about. I study their lives. And one of them, 
is Leonard Ravohill. I don't know if you have read about him. If not, get any of his material, read, and your life will not remain the same. He wrote a book, Sodom had no Bible, Leonard Ravohill. He wrote the book about another Pentecost. We need another Pentecost. And the Lord will give unto us in Jesus' name. And so, in one of his writings, Leonard said, We talk apostolic doctrine, but lack apostolic deed. We claim apostolic faith, but lack apostolic fruit. Some trumpet apostolic power, but lack apostolic poverty. Some claim apostolic endowment, but lack apostolic accomplishment. We may have apostolic vocabulary, but we have apostolic victory. Many claim apostolic succession. Few, if any, desire. Uh, if, few, if any, dear claim apostolic success. The Lord will help us. I want to say again, Psalm 85 verse 6, with thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice. The Lord will revive us. The Lord will revive us. Psalm 80, from verse 1, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flower, thou that dwellest between the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh stir up thy strength, come and save us. And that will be our prayer today. Turn us again, O God. And cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. O oh Lord God of hosts, how long will thou be angry against the prayer of thy people? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears, and givest them tears to drink in great measure. Thou makest us a strive unto our neighbor, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Turn us again, O oh God of hosts. And cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Understand? The children of Israel, the Lord visited them in Egypt when they cried unto him. The Lord brought them out by a strong and mighty hand. And they were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They were fed with angels' food. They drank water from the rock of God. Of course, we know that rock was Christ Jesus, the very source of the living water. And the Bible says, with all of those, with many of them, God was not pleased. They perished in the wilderness. I pray you will not perish in the wilderness. The Lord will turn things around for you in Jesus' name. So the Lord is speaking to you, speaking to me, speaking to every one of us. As I talk on my first point, confirmation of wrong, worthless, wrong or worthless position and the need for repositioning. Confirmation of worthless position, which is a wrong position, and the need for repositioning. Number two. Condition for what the positioning with the most high. Condition for what the positioning with the most high. Number three, consequences of wondrous position with the most high. The consequences, what happen? When your situation change, what happen? When your life change, what happen? When you line up with God. What happened? When you step, step up and you go up higher to a new height to be on the level of God that says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. The level of God that says, Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. When you get to that point, what will happen in your life will be amazing. Come back to the first point. Confirmation. Evidences of worthless position and the need for repositioning. Don't tell me I'm a pastor. Don't tell me I'm a worker. I'm a deacon. Don't tell me I've been in the Lord for so long a time. Where are you now? 
in your relationship with the Lord. And if you are not up there with the Lord, completely dead to the world, your eyes shut to the things of the world, your passion for the things of the world completely gone, then you are not of peace yet. You may have the head knowledge, you may have the church experience, you may have the title, but if God cannot look at you the way he looked at Enoch, the Bible said that Enoch walked with God and he was not. He was not because he walked with God and God took him away. If God cannot walk side by side with you the way he walked with Enoch, if God cannot talk side uh, mouth to mouth with you the way he spoke with Abraham, the way he spoke with Moses, then you are not there yet. Anything and everything you may be laid hold to, laying claim to, a vanity upon vanity, and everything becomes vanity. And uh, when you now want to continue to do things the old way, those will be hindrances to revival. So let's see what some people have to put together. And of course, I put some together myself in order for us to have a turning point, in order for us to have a turnaround. And so understand when there is rationalization of sin in the church, there is need for revival. When sinners and backsliders are easily accommodated, we just take them in and come as you are and say as you came, there is need for revival. When everybody does what seems right in their own eyes, in the church of God, there is need for revival. When it says, come unto me, all you that labor and a heavy laden, he wants us to come so that he can change us, turn us around, transform us, and make us become the way he wants us to be. Not that we came in and remain the same way we came. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I need a better one. When, uh, when there is no regard for the word of God in the church, when we have lost our first love for God, when we do not love him as we once did, where religion is multiplying at the expense of righteousness and holiness and purity. There is need for revival in the church. Why well, you cannot correct a believer anymore without them getting angry, without them threatening to leave and to drop the walk and walk away. Then there is need for revival, for revival when the believers no longer see the need for restitution. There is need for revival in the church. When sins are not courageously dealt with, you see a sinner, you see somebody who is not living right, but if I talk, they will leave. If they do this, they'll be offended. Who are you fooling? Is this your work? Are you the one building the church of God? Is this your church or the church of God? You are a laborer. You are not the owner of the world. And if there is a rule, a condition that must be met in doing it, why don't you do it and please the one that hired you? Why will you be afraid of the person you have to work on instead of the one that sent you? I pray things will turn around in our churches in Jesus' name. We will deal with sin. And we will not tolerate sin in Jesus' name. We need revival in our churches. When the fear of man and the respect of persons turns, the judgment, turns judgment upside down because of position, title, or maybe that person is the one financing your church. And because of that, you shut your mouth. You close your eyes. You turn the other way. We need revival in the church that the Lord will visit his church again in Jesus' name. When earthly interest and occupation are more important to us than eternal business, the business of God, the work of soul winning. You know, there are people, they will tell you, because of coronavirus, they cannot come to church. But coronavirus is there, they go to the store. Coronavirus is there, they go to their job. Coronavirus is there, they are able to go to other places where they cannot come because coronavirus is the church of the living God. They need revival. Something is wrong with them. They do not know that uh, they have become like Ephraim. They are unveiled. The enemy has attacked them. The Lord will deliver them in Jesus' name. 
We need revival where we would rather watch television and read secular books and magazines than read the Word of God, Bible, and then pray, and then pray. And in one of the writings of Leonard Raven Hill again, he said, he that is not praying is playing. And may I tell you this, if you have no altar for God in your life, the world will alter your life. The demons will alter your life. They will alter your family. They will alter everything about you. And so you need real revival. Revival of holiness. Revival is not uh, we come, we sing, we song, we come, we dance, we, we, we scream and shout, uh, and then we bind the devil. That is not the real revival. That is not the real revival. The revival that I know of is if God be for us, who can be against us? I see that in our churches today, we talk more about the devil. We are more afraid of Satan and demons and evil spirits than we are afraid of God. And we pray against them all the time. Instead of us praying and saying, Oh Lord, turn my life around. Make me to be who you really want me to be. You be that person. And then you will know that there is a wall of fire around about you. That no devil, no demon, no principality, or no power, uh, and no power can come near you in Jesus' name. And so we need to pray. We need to pray. Again, not the kind of prayer that people are praying today. Uh, pray, uh, 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 online prayer here, online prayer here, online prayer there. That's not the need, the kind of prayer. I'm talking about the kind of prayer that you go before the Lord. You fall upon your face. You cry unto the Lord like Isaiah did and say, Oh Lord, I am wretched, I am poor, I am undone, I need your help. That is prayer. I'm talking about the kind of prayer that Abraham prayed and he knew the stranger was coming upon a lamb. Abraham did not call Lot. Abraham did not even call the members of his family to say, let us have family gathering together. That was not the kind of prayer. I'm talking about the kind of prayer that took Jesus into the wilderness. Uh, and then for 40 days and 40 nights, uh, he waited upon the Lord. He cried unto the Lord. That is the kind of prayer that we are talking about. I'm talking about the kind of prayer of Jeremiah. I'm talking about the, pray the kind of prayer of Paul the Apostle. The kind of prayer of Peter. I'm talking about real prayer. If you don't pray anymore, some of us now, on your own, pray. Five minutes, you're already snoring. You're already dozing. You can spend one hour in prayer, two hours in prayer, three hours in prayer, and all you do is, uh, when they say, let us pray, can you have a need in your life, a problem in your life, and uh, a blemish in your life, and you go to the public and say, oh, everybody hear me, oh, I committed immorality yesterday, oh, God, forgive you. Is that the way you get forgiveness? Is that the way you get pardon? Unto this man will I know. Unto this man that, 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 that trembles at my word and uh, uh, is contrite at heart. That is in the book of Isaiah chapter 66. Uh, verses 2 and 3, he said, Unto that will I look. And then we are told in uh, Psalm 51, he said, Thou, O Lord, desirest not and sacrifice, as will I give it. He says, The sacrifice of the Lord is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. Read your Bible, a broken and a contrite spirit. Thou will not despise. Thou will not ignore. Thou will not allow to go in vain. All your prayers are just showmanship and shouting. All your prayers are just uh, telling the devil, we under understand you are there and we are celebrating you. I will not celebrate the devil. But real prayer, prayer of repentance, prayer of consecration, prayer of dedication, Prayer of commitment, prayer that we say, Oh Lord, I, I, the way I am, I'm not contented with my life. I'm not content with my prayer life, my relationship with you, my commitment unto you, the, the time I give to the reading of your word. Oh Lord, I need your grace. Pour your spirit upon me. That is revival. That is revival. The kind of prayer you are praying, that you have people you cannot talk with in the shop, the kind of prayer you are praying, that you have enemy bitterness, hatred is there in your life. The kind of prayer you are praying that you cannot be corrected, you cannot be chastised. Uh, the Bible says, let the righteous uh, 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 strike me. It will be like an ointment but now your own kind of Christianity is just the opposite. 
you are paying. But your wife, your husband, you are loggerheads with one another. You are praying, and then when they say, do this for us in the church, pride will not allow you to do it. The Lord is looking for a change. I said the Lord is looking for a change. And he will do it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. When we talk of revival, we are talking about the kind of revival that we can believe that, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. But here are you. All you want is just grab, grab, grab instead of give, give, give. When people put uh, uh, people into leadership position in our churches, who do not meet spiritual qualification, we need revival. We need revival just because you want people. Their hands are soiled. There is blood in their hands. Their lives are not right with God. And then you just say, well, we will use the people we see. You put them there. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from the midst of her. Touch no unclean thing, ye that bear the vessel of the Lord. The Lord is calling all of us, leaders and followers, to this new height with the Lord. The Lord is highly lifted up, highly lifted up. And if we must work with God, we must step up. God will not condescend to our level. We are the one that will step up, and he will help us in Jesus' name. I need a better one. When our Christianity is joyless and passionate, pa passionless, with no passion, with no joy, you are just enduring. Don't you see people? It's like you are begging people to come to church. Begging them to come to church. No, not at the time of Christ. Not in the days of revival. Real revival. Real revival. People were rushing to go to church. When revival broke out, in this church, Deeper Life Bible Church, people were coming from all over. Nobody cared about the distance. But right now, that time, we had no car. That time, we had no mobility. You have to go by public transportation and go in the midst of heavy traffic. This day, you have your car, you cannot come. You have everything, you cannot come. The Lord will revive us. The Lord will revive us. New height with the most high. When we make little or no effort to witness to sinners. When our lives are not even better than that of the sinners around us. When we have time for sports, for recreation, for vacation, for entertainment, but no time for Bible study, no time for prayer. And you know there are people, they will, they will create all the time they want for their children to go to school. But when it comes to the things of God, uh, they will give all the excuses in the world. May the Lord deliver you in Jesus' name. May I tell you, Daddy, may I tell you, Mommy, you are not helping those people, those children of yours. You're not building their life. You're not building their future. Because you are telling them that you believe in the religion of convenience. When it is convenient, we will serve the Lord. When it is not convenient, we will not serve the Lord. God will revive us, and then we will step up high in Jesus' name. Amen. When our preaching lacks conviction, confrontation, and divine fire and anointing, we need revival. We need revival. I'm talking about the kind of revival of Elijah that made him to be able to, to go before the prophets of uh, Baal, confronted them all alone by himself. He wasn't looking for popular opinion. He wasn't looking for the applause of any man. But that conviction brought about that confrontation. When you get to a point in your life that you cannot confront sin, something is wrong. More than likely, you are compromising yourself. And the Lord will revive us in Jesus' name. Amen. When you get to a point in your life that you seldom think about the kingdom of God, seldom think about eternity, you all think more about the things of this world. You know, we are at a point in life that Christians, believers, are afraid of dying. Afraid of dying. I am afraid of dying. I tell you this. Jesus did not get to 70 years old. He died at the age of 33 and a half. He made it to heaven. 
still not not you not ready for here now. There is somebody I love so much. David Brainer. David Brainer died as a very young man. He made it to heaven. It's not about how long you live, but how well you live. Am I communicating? If you live right for God, you will die when you will die. If you don't live right for God, you will die when you will die. The question is, where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? The Lord is calling you, the Lord is calling somebody here to a life of commitment, devotion, and dedication unto the Lord. And it will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. When church services are predictable and businesses are as usual, without the Holy Ghost in charge and in control, we need revival. We need revival. We need revival. When believers can be at odds with each other and not be compared to, com to and not be compared to pursue reconciliation, we need revival. We need revival. We need revival. And can I tell you? You are here today, and there is somebody you are still having a problem with that you don't want to talk with, and you are not making any move for reconciliation. If you die today, you go to hell. Right? I don't care how long you say you are sitting in the grave, I don't care all that you say you know. If you die today, you go to hell. Right? But if you do your part, and the other person does not, you have delivered yourself. Amen. Because you cannot live your life for them. You cannot force them against their will. But you do your part. You that thinks you're a Christian, you that knows you're a Christian, you do your part. That this world should not continue forever. You do your part. And you do it with humility. And you do it with meekness. And you do it with the willingness and readiness to win the other person as well. When Christian husband and wives I'm not praying together with a revival. With a revival. When our marriages are coexisting rather than full of the love of Christ, we need revival. When our children are growing up to adopt worldly values, secular philosophies, and ungodly lifestyles, we need revival. When our children's education and athletic activities are more important to us than the condition of their soul, we need revival. When sin is in the church, when sin in the church is pushed under the carpet, we need revival. The Lord will revive you. The Lord will revive me. The Lord will revive all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And as a Christian, pornography is not a big deal to you. Ungodly movies are not a big deal to you. The things you watch on the internet, on your phone, on the television, does not really matter. You do them with impunity. You need revival. Revival. When, as workers and singers in the church, our singing is half hearted and our worship is lifeless, we need revival. Whenever you are coming to sing, ask yourself the question, why am I singing? Unto who am I singing? Unto who am I singing? You know, I won't go too much into detail. We had a program one time in a particular place. And then, the people to minister that particular morning, they were practicing. They were practicing. To sing for the very first message for the day. And as I passed by them, the Spirit of the Lord ministered to me. Then I went up with my hand. And I went back to them where they were the, the, the practicing. And the choir master and the wife was also there. And I said, Please understand that you are planning and preparing to sing for the message. But it would 
cannot sing for that message you will sing here. I need to talk with you. So I said, all of you need to be interviewed. So I cut a long story short. And I began with the choir leader. And then follow up with the, uh, the, the wife of the choir master. And went to them. By the time it was all over, out of those people, I think at least three of them were already in immorality. And one of them had his boyfriend sitting right in the congregation. And you want to come and sing? And you want to come and sing? Sing on the hook. Sing on the hook. When the revival, when the revival, there was another incident that this person in the church, a worker in the church, brother, and a sister in the church, they were already sleeping together. Singing together. And then eventually, the brother was going to get married, and the same partner is one of those that will sing on the wedding day. And we call it a church. Where is the church? Where is the church? Where is the church? We need revival. And when you see things like that, don't just turn your other eye. You don't close your eye. And you don't say it doesn't matter. Before the anger of the Lord will come, let us be with ourselves. Say that name. Let us judge ourselves and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. When our prayers are empty words designed to impress others, we need revival. When our prayer lacks fervency, we need revival. When our hearts are cold and our eyes are dry, we need revival. I love the track we used to have uh, years back. He said, uh, he said uh, I found it back, my lost tears. My lost tears. When last did you go on your knees praying? And you break down before the Lord. You don't break down when you are only fighting with this and with that. No. You don't break down when you are praying for prosperity and job. No. But when you are concerned about heaven, 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 you see that no matter what level you are in the relation around you, no high for the most high. The Lord will take you there in Jesus' name. So when we cease from praying and mourning and grieving over our own sins and our weaknesses, as well as the sin of others, we need revival. We need revival. When all these things are there, there are clear evidences that we need God in our lives and churches. Um, I have quite a lot. Quite a lot. I actually have yet about 60 things. But for the sake of time, I will move on. Second point. Condition for worldly positioning for the most high. Condition. Condition for worthy positioning with the most high. Sec, uh, Chronicles, second, uh, first Chronicles, the first or second Chronicles chapter seven. That says, if my people, second Chronicles chapter seven. That says, if my people shall call by my name, shall humble themselves. Stop right there. Shall do what? I need a better answer. Huh? Humble themselves humble themselves. If there is no humility in you, if you are pompous, if you are proud, if you are full of yourself, then something is wrong. You need revival. Your prayers cannot be answered. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Saying the kind of prayer you pray when you are humble will be different from the kind of prayer you pray when you are proud, haughty in spirit, full of yourself. I say, and then seek my face. Seek my face. That is very deep. When you seek the face of God, the mercy of God, the kindness of God, the goodness of God, the grace of God, the help of God, 
the move of God and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I need an amen. And we forgive their sin. And what's the last statement? And we heal their land. Do you see binding the devil there? Do you see casting out of demons there? Do you see any other enemy there? Don't be the enemy for yourself. If you want healing, spiritual healing, physical healing, material healing, financial healing, matrimonial healing, come back to this place. Come back to this place. Humble yourself and seek the Lord in thee. And then you will see yourself on top with the most high. And when you are on top with the most high, then whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I need a better one. And whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven in Jesus' name. And then you will see you are not fighting with A, you are not fighting with B. It's not that everywhere you get to, it's not that uh, it's so and so again, no, it's brother so and so again, no. And uh, it shall be well with us. It shall be well with us. And you get to the of what I call Goliath. Goliath. That terrifying personality. Goliath is seen in Greek. You always want more. Always want more. And because you always want more, no time for God. No time for the work of God. No time for the people of God. No time for prayer. No time for Bible study. Greed is a delicate thing. Gluttony, you can eat your life out. That will bring self-indulgence. You are never satisfied. Never satisfied. The second thing is oppression. Oppression. What is oppression? Cruelty. You are very wicked. You don't care whose ox is poor. You can treat anybody anyhow. Deal with anybody anyhow. You have no human feeling within you. Backstab anybody. Destroy them behind them. You are pressing them. That is wicked. The Lord will deliver us from it in Jesus' name. To deal with that, lawlessness, 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 lying, lack of control, indiscipline. It's a lot of lawlessness. When you see anybody that is lawless, they are indiscipline. Lawless people are self will, lawless people are stubborn, lawless people are heavy. Lawless people are disorderly. Lawlessness. Ask yourself, are you lawless? Lawless people don't care about what the word of God says. They don't care about what the ministers of God say. They just live their life their way. And lawless people can easily lie. Easily lie. And because and they say, well, they don't want to lie directly, they lie indirectly. And then they give you the alternative, the alternative, uh, is it alternative truth or alternative truth? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I'm still on this Goliath. I'm still on this Goliath. Immorality. Immorality. Idolatry. Insubordination. You are immoral in your thoughts, you are immoral in your speech. You know, some people, when they will talk about immorality, they limit immorality to only sexual perversion. That's not the only form of immorality. Yes, it's a general thing, but it's not the only thing. Anything unethical is immoral. Am I communicating? Anything unethical is immoral. Idolatry, 
some people's idol that they worship is their children, their son, their daughter. Some people's idol is their wife, their husband. Some people's idol is their job. Some people's idol is their house. Some people's idol is their car. What idol do you have? The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. It's an indication of the depravity of the heart. Depravity of the heart. When you take all those things away, these are the conditions for you to come up high to that level and be able to walk with the Lord. With the Lord. Arrogance. Arrogance. That has to do with the haughtiness of the spirit. You have been hearing the word of God all this while. It's not so much of how much you've been hearing. How much have you done with what you have had? Arrogance. Arrogance wants everything about three people. Who are those three people? I, me, and my son. If not, if it's not about that, it should not be. Arrogance. If you are talking and you have not really praised there, you have not spoken. Arrogance. You are giving people assignment. I'm not a particular sister. And this is unfortunate. And this is supposed to be a leader in the church. No matter what anybody does. It's never right until you make her the leader. When she becomes the leader of the group, then, uh -huh, now we can walk. If you don't make her the leader, she will frustrate the life of whoever is the leader in that group. Now, you tell me yourself, is that of God? It's not of God. Operating under another spirit. Arrogance. Then, what's the next letter now? T. Terrorism. I'm not talking about African terrorism. And I'm not even talking about the political, the terrorism in America right now. I'm talking about terror within the church. Within the church. You know that there are pastors that are terror to their members. And there are members that are terror to their pastor. When the pastor is coming and he sees the brother, the heart breaks blue. If he has his way, he will pass out of that place. Because there is a terrorist in the church. Terrorist in the church. The pastor says, this is how we're going to go. The terrorist says, why must we go that way? No, we cannot go. Anything you do, everything you do, you have to begin to pray, especially, oh God, if it is possible, let this person not even be at this meeting I'm calling. It's a terrorist. You are the leader, but he will not allow you to function. Even you want to say something, by the time he says his own, you forget what he wanted to say. And they have a way of getting people on their side. The spirit of Absalom. Amen. Absalom was so strong and powerful that in a very sneaky way, he drew his father's confidence away from the father. Even the person the father depended upon, like the voice of God, Ahithophel, fell into that trap. May the Lord deliver us from them in Jesus' name. But you know what, be what became of Absalom? He ended in destruction. I pray we will not end in destruction in Jesus' name. But then we need to repent. Terrorism. Threatening. Threatening. Because, you know, we are not many. And how I pray that the terrorists in our church, God will shut them down. I need a better one. And God will shut them out. Because we are not many. And they are the, they are the few you could see to walk. You want to do something, they threaten you. Well, even